code of conduct. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. crown. I put in extra work that just can't be found. Work. I took the sword out the stone, wasn't a thing. Dead. Look me in my eyes, cause I'm a king. I'm a king. Look me in my eyes, cause I'm a king. Yeah. king. God made me punch in accurate numbers. Yeah. My castle won't crumble. Nah. What I tackle will fumble. Yeah. I've been a leader when they ain't see it, but now my feet is up. up. According to me, royalty didn't end with King Tut. Nah. Crown on my head, clouds is at my legs. Yeah. Big says sky is the limit. I look down on the ledge. The I push the bar like I'm opening a cell. Hands in my cookie jar, you won't come out with a single nail. You I can't. need all of mine. The weight of my shoulders won't fit on a scale. What's a king to a giant? What? Well, Goliath fell. Yeah. Even if we playing chess, dog, this king can't be checked. I make all my moves on the board. I invented my step. Uh -huh. I'm a king, the blood of a ruler. I feel like Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa. Make your squad disappear like landing by the Bermuda. Triangle, look at it from my angle. I'm a king, the closest thing to being one of God's angels. Yeah. I'm a king. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. crown. I put in extra work that just can't be found. Work. I took the sword out the stone, wasn't a thing. Dead. Look me in my eyes, cause I'm a king. I'm a king. Look me in my eyes, cause I'm a king. king. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. This is the Code of Conduct for the King Podcast. I am your host, Jay Spence the King. And this is a fun week, I guess, to, that we have started already. It's Tuesday, uh, July 18th, and it is a heck of a news week already. Uh, I guess, you know, starting with D-Hop going to Tennessee to Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs and all the top running backs that's kind of sort of looking for contracts right now, Tony Pollard, all of those guys, um, you know, kind of making a fuss about, and to me, I think is a good reason to have a fuss, but there's a lot to talk about around the NFL. So I have a very special guest, one of the biggest guys I know, which means he's a big freaking deal. Big O, big Jerry O, what's going on, man? What's up, Spence, man? What's going on? Man, I appreciate you filling in. Um, today, uh, John Fina was supposed to be joining me, but um, he had, I think, some football practice or something going on. Right, right. And, uh, and you know, it, it's a good thing when I have two former <laughs> Bills players to lean on. So I appreciate you taking the time to join me tonight, man. But what's going on with you? Not much, man. Uh, it's about that time. Um, it start. I, you know, John would have told you tonight if you asked him. Once July Fourth is over with, man, you start getting itchy. You start mm -hmm. getting that feeling again. You know, you start understanding that in a couple of weeks you got to pack that car up and start rolling north, northeast up into Buffalo, heading to Rochester, getting ready for training camp. And um, you know, even this many years later. Uh, you still get that feeling, man. It was like, you know, when 4th of July is over, it, it's it, you, you get that nerve. You also get a little bit of sadness because, you know, pretty soon that's the best you're going to feel for about seven months mm. when you when you head out there to the first day of practice and, uh, you know, start beating on people. But, no, it's about that time. My sons are getting geared up. My oldest is getting ready to start camp as a coach. My, uh, my younger one is getting ready to start camp uh, as a player. So uh, I'm excited, man. Pretty soon we're going to have football to talk about every day. Like actual football. Like I guess technically yes. we, we have something to talk about now. The rookies um, for some teams, <clears throat> the Bills are one of those teams. The rookies reported, you know, for mini camp or training camp or whatever you want to call it. And um, so I guess now going forward, we should have some stuff to actually talk about. But, you know, uh, I feel you, man. I feel you. This time of year is always like for me. I get I miss the NFL like you know the Super Bowl is over like that following week when Sunday hits it's like oh there's no football yep. so I miss it immediately so to get here to July man it's just like okay all right something has to give the day that first camp breaks and obviously and, and evidently the Chiefs reported today rookies and quarterbacks but you know there's always that saying all is right with the world football season has started and uh it's definitely upon us well, let's let's get started with it, and and I guess so to, to get right into the show. Let's talk. Let's start with um, the RB money, the running back money. That's a big topic right now. I don't want to talk about it too long. I feel like everybody this week on all of our shows are going to do a deep dive into it. So right. I don't want to go too deep on it, but uh, just you know, I'll give my opinion, and I want your opinion. So let's start with you. What's your what's your opinion on um, just a First, do running backs deserve the type of money that they're asking for? And then B, right. 
Um, is there a problem with the way the NFL is handling uh, these rookie contracts and, um, you know, all of these tags that we got, the, the franchise tag and whatever right. else they want to use? You know, I, I and we're going to dive deep into tomorrow night in line to gain. Sarah and I have talked about it. We're going to probably get into more of the contract look and the money look and things like that. But just off the surface, the players in the NFL have nobody to blame but themselves. Um I put this out there this morning on Twitter, first thing in the morning. Um, John Butler one time told me in a contract negotiation, I was actually going to have to take a pay cut. I was going to have to take about a $35,000 pay cut the way all the, um, you know, vet minimums and how many years you play and all this. It's a, it's a long story, but I was going to have to take a cut. And I'm like, well, you know, John, I mean, uh, obviously I don't want to do that. And And John's comment to me was, Sometimes in negotiations, you have the hammer and sometimes the other guy has the hammer. And right now I have the hammer. I'm able to do this. That's what I'm going to do. And it was a very respectful, you know, he said it in a very respectful way and he was right. I mean, it's how negotiations go. And about three years ago when the CBA was up again and the players in the union had the opportunity to renegotiate this deal with the ownership, they had the hammer. Mm -hmm. They had all the power because when the power comes, the power structure, what it comes down to is, yes, I know the owners have all this money and everything. If you don't have players, you don't have premier players, you don't have a league. Okay. And, and for whatever reason, the union, the message was clouded. They got the veteran guys to and and if you look at this thing, there's there's different portions of the union. There's the players, there's the current players, and there's the retired players. So the retired players, they have it's Nolan Harrison who kind of is the voice for that segment of the union. They have a specific message that they're putting out there. And I actually went to a a retired players event in New York area. I'm sorry, excuse me, Washington D.C. when this whole thing was starting to get talked about. And they're like, look, this is what you got to take back to you guys. This is what you got to tell them. And, you know, they bought the older guys easy. I mean, they, we, they gave us a couple extra hundred dollars a month on our pensions. They were happy, so they were taken care of. But the players, for whatever reason, if, if this was Major League Baseball or the NBA, there would have been a strike. There would have been a work stoppage. There would have been no football that year. Mm -hmm. They had the power. But instead, they gave it away for things. And, and you know, just for instance um, – you know, there's there was a lot of stuff that they, you know, they came out and said, and if you look at this, and D. Smith, who, by the way, was re um, reelected as union president, but under a vote of no confidence because the the margin wasn't big enough, and and now the union will be uh, taken over soon by a guy named Lloyd Howe, who I'm really excited about, has a huge business background, a huge financial background, but if you look at this in 19 and 20 when the negotiations were going on, okay? The players wanted more money. So what did the what did the league do? They said, yeah, we'll give you some more money, but you're going to play another game. Mm -hmm. And they accepted it. And, and you look at the percentage of the money, it rose from 48% to 48.5%. They got a half percent increase in money, and they're, but they're having to play another game and put their body in more harm. Not even talking about the Thursday night games and those types of things. You know, which actually was a lower split um, than the 2006 agreement. And then you got NFL teams with a higher value and all this. So you look at all this stuff. Players had all the energy. They had all the power. They gave it up. So now you have the situation with running backs. And you can't fault ownership. Are you going to tell you you're going to force these guys to, to pay guys amounts of money they don't have to? No. I mean, it's business, right? So to me, the players in the union – they're the ones to blame for Saquon Barkley and, and these guys not making the money. It's because of the collective bargain agreement they went ahead and passed, you know, two, three years ago. And um, it's it's a shame, but it's their fault. And, you know, so I guess so I agree with you. Like, obviously, it's their fault because this is this is why you actually bargain during the collective bargaining agreement process. Like right. this is why you take things to the table. And I remember when, when this last one just passed in like there, obviously as a fan, you felt like this was a victory because we weren't going to miss football, uh, right. you know, but 
I remember looking at it and and saying like, man, I don't know if these things are vic are, are the, the wins and the victories that they think that this is, you know, when it and and sure enough, the first big thing that comes around now is these running back contracts and the way that they, you know, utilize the the franchise tag and um, the rookie contracts basically utilizes them for their entire prime of their career. I, I just, I don't know. And it, for me, it's one of those things where it's like, well, do would it be smart for some guys to do um, like the Debo Samuel thing? Like, do right. you want to be paid as a wide receiver, but then be used as a running back? Or are you trying to be paid as a running back? You know, and because that, that's where it comes down to. Like, if I'm that good of a player, if I'm if I'm I don't know. So this year coming out, Bijan Robinson, right? So if I'm Bijan, do I want to be labeled as a running back now just based off of this? Or do I want to say, you know what? No, I'm a. I'm a wide receiver, but I have all purpose type, <laughs> you know, type. Talent. Right. Like, how well, do you, Debo, how do you present right. yourself? well, Debo shouldn't even have a category. He should be an outlier. He should be getting paid accordingly because he can be a running back. He can also be a wide receiver mm -hmm. Spence. And, and, you know, the thing is, is, and this is the whole, this is the, this is the sentence that's the, kind of the icing on the cake of this whole situation. In a time when NFL uh, when NFL team values are skyrocketing, when franchise values are skyrocketing, player salaries have been pretty much stagnant or the same. And that's an issue. And, and as far as, you know, collective bargaining, the big part of it is what? Revenue sharing. And now you're in a situation where the ownership is sharing a lot less money with the players than they have in the past. And while the money is going up, you still have to look at the value of the team and the percentages, you know, these owners are making much more money. And then you throw a 17th game into it and then just exponential uh, the value of, of television contracts. Um, it's amazing. So I think the move to Lloyd Howe is very, very important. I think it's symbolic. Um, one of the things they did I thought was really, really smart. Um, usually, you know, it's that old thing we talk about with, with, um, with Meek Mill, right? Gangsters move in silence, and I don't even talk a lot, right? Um, yeah. The NFL has been – I mean, the PA has leaked stuff for years. I mean, you knew who was, who was a candidate for something. When they negotiated this, this, this deal or when they went in, they brought this executive committee together led by I – can't, I can't pronounce his name. It's either Teeter or Tedder. The center for the, for the Browns is the guy who's the leader of the players group. It was him, and, and Richard Sherman was in there. Uh, Mac, the center from Atlanta, some other players. It was lock and key. It was just those eleven guys. They kept the candidates secret, and they went ahead and they and they found the new union leader. I think Hal's a guy that's going to be really good for him. Like I said, huge business background, um, knows how to make money in a time when there is a ton of money out there in the NFL, and hopefully he'll be able to get this thing shifted back to the players. But here's the sad part about it: they got to wait like six more years five or six more years before they come up again mm. for another renegotiation of collective bargaining. So it's just frustrating. I feel bad for Saquon Barkley, premier player in the league should be compensated like a premier player. Um, everybody else, the fact that the fact that um, my man uh, what's my man feed me oh, running uh, back Ezekiel. from the Cowboys. Yeah. Ezekiel the fact Elliott. that Ezekiel Elliott still does not have a job. Now, granted some of that might be him, but still, the fact that he's not on a team, I mean, it's uh, it's a sad deal. People want to see the premier players play, and when these guys are sitting out because they can't get the contracts they deserve, that's an issue. But I think, again, when you look at it at the end of the day and you're really, really honest with yourself, this is this is the fault of the, of the, of the players and the players' union signing a subpar uh, collective bargaining agreement. I, I I agree again. I agree with you whole like with uh, on everything that you said. I guess the part that really bothers me though is is the other part that you said there that he's a premier player. You know, for me, I could see if it was like you know, and and I don't, when I say this, I'm not taking a jab at any running back that's in the NFL, right? Um, but you know, like last year so, or this this off season actually, Devin Singletary left Buffalo, ended up going to Houston. Devin Singletary did not produce 80 percent of the offense for the buffalo right. Bills last season right. so devin singletary not getting the contract that saquon barkley is looking for makes sense but could you imagine like at this point 
if Josh Allen was up for free agency and they said, oh, no, we're not going to pay Josh Allen, even though he ran for most of the rushing yards, you know, right. he's a quarterback. So, like, he's your main offense. So, to me, it's like, I yeah. get it. You're talking about running backs, quarterbacks, wide receivers, all these different positions. But at right. the end of the day, the guy is the most important guy on your offense for your team. I just don't understand, you know, why, why, I don't know. It bothers me on that, on that. Right. But I think you got to, you got to look at it that way, though, right? I mean, you got to look at it. If I'm going to spend my money, if I have money and I got to spend it in an era where the where the quarterback, and you look at the AFC and really across the NFL, there's not many, there's not many journeymen, uh, lower level. I mean, these quarterbacks, there's a lot of really good quarterbacks in the league. Even guys like Brock Purdy that came out of nowhere, coming off of a UCL surgery, are still going to command high dollar once he gets healthy. Things like that. If I got to spend twenty some percent of my salary cap on one player and that player is a quarterback, I've got to spend a bunch of money on guys he can throw it to. So I'm going to have to sacrifice somewhere. Right. And I'm definitely not going to sacrifice on my offensive line because I got to protect this guy. So what am I going to do? I've got to pick somewhere. So, you know, the study's out and I would not doubt, I would not doubt there's a, there's a, there's a mathematics out there called, Actuarial uh, mathematics, actuarial science, what insurance companies use to figure out if where you live, what rate are they going to charge you for earthquake insurance, hurricane insurance, flood insurance, right? Um, I would not doubt if they don't have people that are crunching numbers saying, you know, we'll go ahead and draft a running back because we're going to get him for if he's in the first round, we're going to get him for five years. And by the time I have him for five years, most players' careers are over in three. So I pay him one contract, and then I go ahead and, and draft another one and backfill from there. I mean, it's uh, it's a sad state of affairs, but it's it's the way it is. And and again, I don't think fans can get upset with ownership. It is at the end of the day, it's still a business. It's about making money, and as we all know, they're gonna make theirs. Yeah, they absolutely. That's what it comes down to. It's a money business, and they're in it for the money. They're gonna make as much as they can, and it is what it is. It, it is what it is. Well, Before Spence, we move on to the, oh, go ahead. What? Well, I was just gonna say, Spence, like everybody, it's getting up in arms about um, about the 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 seat licenses and things like that in a new stadium, right? It's about bread. It's, that's it's about bread. That's what it is. You can't make a sandwich without bread, right? I mean, it's how you, it's it's what it's about, and and, and, and you know, say what you will. Uh, these guys don't spend billions of dollars to, to to just hand money out. Yeah, and and Sarah added in you know using the franchise tag as well. So you use the, the rookie deals. You get right. them. You know, like I said, you you have them during their prime. These guys are. And then I was talking to someone earlier today. I think on Twitter. I can't remember where I was having this conversation, but I was also saying, you know, you look at it coming out of college. These guys now play three years, four years. They play. And the running backs typically are even in the to the day and age where it's a passing league everywhere. Those right. running backs that are elite like that are used <clears throat> in every which way possible. So right. they're overused in college. Then they get drafted. Then they go to a team and they abuse them. There. Like David Johnson, it it kills me what happened to his career. Like how quickly he fell off a cliff. Right. You know, the the Steelers use Le'Veon Bell like like no other. And now, granted, again, you hold out, things happen, whatever you. But still, it's like some of these guys, I understand when we're talking about the regular formula, but we are talking about these superstars like this, man. And I think Bills fans should be the loudest in support because we we got the benefit off of LaShawn McCoy coming over from the Eagles, getting a second contract. So, but we can move on from that. I don't, like I said, I don't want to st spend too much more time on it. We already spent Who'd ever thought, Spence, who'd ever thought, Spence, when you had kids and they they came home and they said, hey, man, you're going to start football practice today. What position do you want to play? I'm gonna play running back, and then you like try to like beat him to death so they don't <laughs> they don't play running. No, you're not. Like, no, you ain't no, you're running not. Back. Matter of fact, <laughs> and now I guess you know what? Now it's like I want you to. I'll tell play cornerback or defensive end. If you if yes. you can't be the quarterback, yes. play defensive end yes. or cornerback. That's it. Yes, it's exactly. insane, man. So <laughs> before we move on to other topics, really quick, I do got a quick word from my man Buffalo Freddie. Okay, here's the deal. I know as Bills fans, we wait all year for the fall and the winter so we can go to the Bills games. I get it. Trust me, I do. But let me tell you why this time of the year is elite. 
is party time. And we're going to party for so many reasons, whether it's a graduation party, a birthday party, family reunion, or just because it's Saturday and the weather's perfect. Here's the thing. My guy, Buffalo Freddy, has everything you need to make your party the best party of the year. We have everything from chairs and tables to premium tents, water slides, wet and dry bounce houses, and so much more. And that's not all. The best barbecue catering in Western New York has you covered, whether it's a small party or a corporate gathering. Buffalo Freddy Barbecue Catering makes everything easy for you. Rentals and bookings available now at www.buffalofreddy.com or you can call 716-4-FREDDY. That's 716-437-3339. Remember, for all your party rental needs, just call 4-FREDDY. All right. Shout out to my man, Buffalo Freddy. He, he gets it popping. He got a, he got a, a, a stage. Like if you wanted to, like if Joe wants to come out of retirement from being, you know, he, Joe used to record uh, music and everything. So I feel like Joe should come out of retirement, right. put on a live concert at the Bills Mafia house. I'm just saying, I'm throwing this out. I'm giving ideas out for free. Don't, you know what I mean? I don't even, I don't even need a portion of the ticket sales or nothing. I'm just saying Joe could drop an album, do the concert there at the Mafia house we could do the beer release and everything right there. It could be, a, it, we could just have it. We could just have it. I'm ready for it. Let's do yep. it. Now, is he, dabbling, is he dabbling back in the music scene again? I know he, I know he, I know he still plays. I know what he does, but is he like, is he trying to come up with some, uh, with some concepts, some, some songs or what? He should. I told him, I said, Joe, we should do an album together, man. I'll, I'll, I'll come out of retirement <laughs> if you do. <laughs> I'm playing. Man, they already, they are, hey, Spence, they, are, they already did that, man. It was, it was, uh, it was Run DMC. Well, no, but, but Joe, who well, said, I can't who speak said for Joe, a DJ could but be I'm not as good. Yeah, well, I'm not as good as Run DMC <laughs> to do that with them. So, so I'm just joking for everybody listening. I'm not coming out of no type of music. As long retirement. as you guys play, as long as y'all play rock box, I'm good, man. If you come out, let's you open it. up a rock box, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so all right well let's let's get around nfl man one a, a topic that came out today that i heard that had me really interested because you know all we ever hear about this guy is that he's the goat bar right. none like not even no one close and that regardless of what you heard and what you think you know it wasn't just tom brady because bill belichick is this much of a genius for football although his record Absolutely sucks when he doesn't have Tom Brady. <laughs> he is the GOAT. Today it comes out that, um, according to some sources, I, I can't say how true this is or isn't, but apparently he's on the hot seat. And he's been on the warm seat for two two years now since Tom Brady left. And now he's on the hot seat. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think, I think what puts Belichick on the hot seat is not Belichick's coaching on the field. I think what puts Belichick on the hot seat is the off the field stuff. I would imagine, and I'm, you know, I've never been in his meeting rooms. I don't know him personally. Um, we did beat him in uh, the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium when he was a head coach of the Browns, which was a good day. Um, but I think what gets Bill in trouble is probably he's really hard to work for. Um, I would imagine that there's probably a lot of turnover in the front office. Um, there's a lot of, uh, 10 situations and I would think this whole wanting to prove himself after Tom Brady left has probably taken that to the nth degree, considering to his age and knowing that he doesn't have many years left before he's out of football. So, I, you know, I still think he's a premier coach. Obviously any coach that's any good will tell you, okay, yes, coaching is important but you got to have players to execute what you think up. Right. I mean, I watched Andy Reid in Philadelphia for how many years, mm -hmm. you know, they got close. They went to super bowl. They didn't win it. Now he goes to Kansas city. He gets Mahomes. He has Kelsey all of a sudden, boom, he's a, he's an unbelievable coach. He wins a couple super bowls. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's on the hot seat, but I would have to think a lot of it is, just the off the field wear and tear and grind of dealing with them day in and day out. It can't be getting any better. And uh, if Mac Jones uh, plays like the old Mac Jones and not the new Mac Jones, it's going to get really, it's going to get really tight, uh, <laughs> really tight this year. Cause considering he's in a division where you have the bills. And if you, if you, if, if you listen, there's a lot of people, 
that aren't picking the Bills to win the AFC East. And I've said it before, it's the hardest division in football. And um, it's not going to be any easier for Belichick this season having to play Miami twice, the New York Jets twice, and the Bills twice. So I can see why that uh, would, would definitely be happening. Well, listen, so you're you're in Oklahoma, right? Yes. Is is marijuana legal there? Yes, very much so. Okay, so it's legal in Arizona now, and I know Buffalo just opened up a couple. Well, I should say this: it's I mean. medical. It's medical marijuana you here. So use. you you go online, you tell the guy you got plantar fasciitis or a hangnail, and they give you a card. So it's basically legal. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm asking that because apparently. <clears throat> the people that are not picking the bills for the division are on this medu- med- this medical marijuana in Oklahoma, <laughs> Buffalo, or Phoenix. I don't know what the heck is wrong with people. I understand that Aaron Rodgers is there. And this wasn't even where we were supposed right. to go with this conversation. Right. They're killing me, man. Like the Dolphins, them signing Ramsey is not closing the gap from what we saw at the end of the season. Bringing Aaron Rodgers over. I'm sorry. Did y'all watch him in Green Bay last year? Now, I'm not saying that he fell off the cliff. He's Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to respect him. But he wasn't exactly uh, MVP candidate Aaron Rodgers last season either. So I, I need you all to really put some respect on the on the team that has consistently now been at the top. I'm not saying like we're there for 20 years like the Patriots were. But come on. Like we got the division. Yeah, got to. Well, gotta obviously, ride. you called it. Marijuana is legal in New York. And, and three of the people that picked the Jets today were on the uh, were on the get up panel. On ESPN, the one that did not, the one that picked the Bills, is uh, Dan Orlovsky. And I have to say he he knows a little bit about football. But I, I am not quite as harsh on the Aaron Rodgers situation as you are and others are. I still think Aaron Rodgers is a hell of a football player, and I've said it before. Aaron at 80%, hell, even 75% is better than most in the league. Add it with the defense. I think they're going to be really good. Uh, but I do think the Bills are going to be better than they were last year as well. So my, my worry on the my worry in the division is more along the lines of the of the Dolphins, just because. Now I say that thinking about what we did last year with Leslie Frazier running the defense, it'll be interesting to see if things change with Sean McDermott calling the defense, and will they handle that team speed that the Dolphins have a little differently? But uh, no, I think the Bills are still the king until somebody knocks them off. And that's all I'm saying. For the record, I do want to say I agree. I think if if anybody is a listener of Code of Conduct or if they listen to uh, Chop Up or Hump Day Hotline or all that stuff, then let everybody know. Everybody knows how much I love Aaron Rodgers and how long I've loved Aaron Rodgers. I just I just think at this point now the Jets got him on the back end of his career. So right. I, I, I do think he's better than what they had. I think they'll be a better team than they were last year. But I'm I'm talking about straight up. Oh my God! The Jets are now Super Bowl favorites. I'm sorry. Um, Aaron Rodgers has been great, Aaron Rodgers, and he only right. has one Super Bowl to his name. So right. I just, I just want to caution people against saying everybody is going to be Tom Brady when they leave their team and go to another team in their 40s. That's I know, but you also, but you, you, you yeah, well, go ahead. <laughs> you always make the comment, okay? Would you, just met? Would would you rather say? In a conversation, Spence, you know, I know Jim Kelly's only won one Super Bowl. Okay. I mean, we know how hard that is. I I I'm not, I have no I have no problem with him winning one Super Bowl. I don't have a problem with him winning one Super Bowl. I think I think Aaron Rodgers is I've said this plenty of times on public record. I think he is if not the best quarterback I personally have watched, like the guy that I think overall, I think he was, did he have the winnings? No. And I know Bruce says wins are not a quarterback stat. So if I'm going to, of all time, me personally rank quarterbacks, I put him just behind Dan Marino to me personally. I think Dan Marino, you know, and then Aaron Rodgers. But I'm talking about right now, 2023, Aaron Rodgers going into New York or New Jersey. I just don't think that, I don't think that he changes it that much that it's like, okay, these guys are Super Bowl favorites. He wasn't right. a Super Bowl. And that's what I mean. I don't mean to sh- – he has one. I don't have one as a fan. So I can't talk crap about Aaron Rodgers and his right, Super Bowl. Right, right. I know what you're saying. I'm, just, I know what you're saying. I'm just saying that when it comes to the Jets, it's like, right. okay, so you got Aaron Rodgers. Now you're Super Bowl favorites. No. They do have a great defense. Do you think, do you think Hall is going to be healthy enough, or do you think they're going to go out and, and try to get uh, Cook? I don't know, man. Um I could see him going out and getting cooked. Um, I just, 
I just I just got a lot of faith in what they're doing defensively. I just really do. And I think it takes – what I think is it takes Aaron Rodgers, takes all the drama out of the offense, okay? Uh, Robert Slay, the, the head coach, he's not going to have to worry about offense. They've got a head coach over there now. they got an OC, whatever. Now he's going to concentrate even more on the defense. Um, I just – that whole mix to me. But, yeah, I could see him going trying to get Cook. I mean – uh, with Hall in the situation that he is, um, if they got the money, I don't know what their salary cap situation is, but um, you know, it'll be interesting. I mean, it's it's FC East, man. It's gonna be a knockdown drag out. It's not gonna be a cakewalk. Definitely gonna. It's, it's definitely gonna be interesting this year. Um, you know, you know how it was before, right? How many times, Spence? And I know you want to train up just real quick. No, no, no. You're good. You're oh good. man, you play, you play, uh, you play six games against the worst teams in the in the league, man. You, you get automatic six wins just because of, There's you know, because of your vision. No more. Nobody, yep. nobody better say that anymore. Yeah, no, it's a bit. Now you figure if the Bills go four and two, five and one in this division, nobody can take that. Nobody can right. take that. From you. Right. Nobody. Exactly. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, okay, well, let's pivot a little because we're still talk AFC um, for the most part. A guy that I was very public about um, wanting to sign with the Buffalo Bills, and a lot of us were public about it. Um, D Hop chooses Tennessee, the Titans. So he, in, in essence, the way I want to word that is, he chooses Tannehill over Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. I know it's about money, so he chose the contract. But yeah. when, when you're talking about football at this point, I'm talking about well, he he chose to catch passes uh, from a quarterback who probably won't put him at the pace that he's used to <laughs> right how do you feel about it i think that it's um it says a lot um you know he definitely chose money he can say what he wants when the two premier teams in the afc want to sign you especially kansas city i mean if you really wanted a championship um you know with with you know they win one they've been to a couple i mean they win a couple it's and then you have the bills who you get us over the hump. I get to play with Stephon Diggs. They get another dynamic weapon in the draft. Um, no, nah, don't tell me you want to win a championship if you didn't sign with one of those two teams. It's not. It's obviously not about that. Um, he took the lesser. He, I guess he, you could say he took the lesser of a few evils when he went with Tennessee because you can remotely say that Tennessee is a good football team. But, again, like you said, you talked about Tannehill, and I don't got any problem with Tannehill, but he's definitely not those two. Um, you know, I don't know what variable is going to do with them. You got to feed the running back too. Um, just how many opportunities you're going to get to catch the ball. Um, you know, they're still, they're still reeling from their GM getting rid of AJ Brown last year. I mean, they're still trying to figure that out. Right. Um, so they go ahead and get D hop to bring him in, even though, you know, D hops tremendous receiver, he's a different style receiver than Brown. So, Hey, um, nothing but love to him. I like him. He's one of my favorite players in the league. I think he's a great mm-hmm. player. But don't tell me you want to win a championship when you have the opportunity to play for those two teams. And you ain't got to sign a long-term deal, right? Yeah. Just sign a one. Do a one sign a one-term deal. Term deal. You, got, you, got, you had a great contract when they when they traded you to to, to Arizona. You got you got money. Just sign and, a one-year deal. Go chase a ring and then go and make a move. And and we started the show off by talking mm-hmm. about the running back situation and the contracts there. I'm never going to fault a player for saying, I want to go get money. I want the back. Right. I'm never going right. to fault him. But like Jerry is saying, don't come out on, in public and, and like make a right. big deal. You're pounding the table. No, I want to win a championship and I would love to play with one of these quarterbacks. Right. And these like, don't don't make it out to be this thing like it's about winning. When it's right. clearly, I mean, because it's clearly about money. And the thing about AJ, so you mentioned AJ. I just don't get it. Now I get it. It would cost a little bit more to have kept AJ, like right. more. But AJ's younger, and I think at this point of their careers, I think it's fair to say that at this moment, I would feel like AJ's the better of the the two, right? Like, I I think I think he is in the in the game that they're playing now. I think that if you had AJ and D Hop on the same team, oh, man. they complement each other really well, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's where I think that's where where we lost some stuff with Diggs last year. Where was that other guy, that physical guy, to come along? I think Gabe. I think Gabe's a great receiver. I don't have any. I'm not. Mm-hmm. This isn't a bash Gabe thing, but you know you have to have complementary pieces, right? 
So I think those two complement each other well. But, you know, when you look at football the way it is now and the way a lot of things are going, it's a lot of one-on-one stuff, a lot of 50-50 jump balls, back shoulder stuff. You know, you got to have that physical. I, I was thinking the other day, there was a lot of conversation, and you and I texted last night about it. We were talking about Eric Moulds. Mm. He, he Moulds would absolutely just go bonkers in today's game because he was A.J. Brown before A.J. Brown. Yeah. He was a huge receiver, strong hands, could go up and apex the ball. He could run away from people. People forget he had kick return touchdowns early in his career for the Bills. I mean – you know, that's the type of guy that I like. So, yeah, I would probably, if I had a choice between the two, I'd take A.J. Brown and then maybe I could talk D-Hop into coming on board as well. But I like physical wide receivers. I really do. Now, I, I hear you. And, and on that mode situation, like, first, I just want to shout him out. It's, so his birthday was, was it yesterday or Sunday? I believe it was, it was this week. I know that. Yeah, it was this week, yeah. Um, Modes, I love the comparison to A.J. because I think, I think they both were strong, physical, like right. modes, man. He would just run through people <laughs> like the, it's almost like he wanted like he, he wanted you to be physical with him. Right. Can we talk a little bit about Mo? I just I, you know, how yeah, we can. We can, right? because I think in one of the things that I've always been really interested in, Spence, and I still watch it is is how positions progress through the years. Right. How mm -hmm. do they how do they evolve? And I and I remember we went from you know, James Lofton, and we went from Andre Reed, and these guys were just, you know, clean, man, come out, were, you know, uniform was just clean, running just crazy precise routes, smooth, Dre to get the ball across the middle, you know, and just, you know, would kill people with route running and things like that. And then this just monster shows up, and he's like, they're, you know, he's, he's jumping over people, ragdolling coverage, and I'm talking about Eric and just how different it was. And, you know, we had that whole stretch of the real physical receiver. And then we start moving into the smaller guys that are that are space guys. And we're going to clear out. We're going to run, you know, we're going to run a bunch of shallow crossing routes. You know, guys like Edelman and some of the smaller slot guys that come into the league. And I just I love watching these these receivers progress. But it was, you know, when Eric was drafted, he was that guy, man. He was like. You, she showed up and you're like, dude, that you know, that dude's a that dude's a wide out. Yeah, you know, you're like, that dude's a wide out. And he was just so dominant with the ball. There, one handed apexes the ball, brings it down, just physical strength for days, like was born with it. Like that wasn't weight room strength. That was that was something his 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 mom and dad gave him. And, and um, it's just it's just insane to watch him, man. Yeah, it is. And the other thing about Moles I loved is the way he competed. I mean, he got after it. I mean, that catch right there, I remember that catch like it was yesterday. I mean, that thing's about as dumb as can be. I mean, look at this. Just, I mean, that's just stupid. But that's what we went to. Then this this whole realm of receiver comes in and, and shows up. And um, But, no, it's cool, man. It's the one thing that's really cool about football. It's kind of like nowadays where, um, you know, that's my boy AVP right there, the pill. Another one in the catch. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know what? it's funny now because because those type of catches now seem like they're routine, right? Like these right. guys are coming out of college making catches like right. this. But but man, Modes was doing this, and it was like week in and week out. And I again, I try not to. I don't mean this ever to take shots at people, but when you talk about the quarterback play that he had, I feel like if he if if he had an opportunity to play his entire career with. Manning like like Marvin Harrison right. did or if he had a right. you know like I just I just couldn't imagine what his numbers would be if he had a quarterback on that level or even if he played with like Drew Bledsoe for his entire career as opposed right. to just a little bit of time right you can't tell me he wouldn't have been mentioned um in the same conversations as the Terrell Owens and whoever else that we put in in that top conversation right. and he he, right. he was insane he was insane right. there's no doubt I mean and that's that's what he was that was that type of receiver the you know, the Terrell Owens is of the world, the Des Bryant's. I mean, you know, Eric Moulds was a guy that kind of led that led that crew that came in and kind of changed the wide receiver position. And I mean, um, you know, tremendous player, tremendous dude was always good to my kid and um, one of my favorite teammates, uh, definitely when I played. Man, well, it's always good to be able to talk to somebody that played with him and, and like, you know, hear hear it from that perspective because as fans obviously we love them and we want them on the wall but 
I always, to me, it. I listen to how their former teammates talk about him, and I've never heard a bad report about him. Um, Ruben, you know, there's certain guys that just should be on the wall and in the hall as well. I don't right. know if I don't. I can't say Mode should be in the hall just based off of how his career right. went. But I mean, like, dude, he man, he should have been. He sh- right, he exactly. You know, and it's it's not his fault. I mean, you know, you you you're on a team and you, you come in and you, you catch a franchise on the downside, you know, of course the 17 year drought, um, you know, same thing with Rube. Rube was there. We've gone to some playoff games. Uh, Rube had, I can't remember how many pro bowls in a row. And Eric went to a bunch of pro bowls as well. Um, both of them are definitely deserving of being on the wall of fame. And hopefully they will be on the wall when the new stadium is built. Yep. That's, that's one of the things. Um, and I know we, again, on your show, we, talked about you know the wall of fame and how how um they we feel like they should handle that it just bugs me because i feel like there's four or five guys off the top of my head right now that i think should be up there you know right. and i know you can't put everybody there but you know right. but eric modes and and, and reuben brown for sure are two that should um eric wood is one that comes to mind uh obviously i think about freddie um we we could always right. talk that so so we'll move on right. from that but but man, it's 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 crazy to me that we've had such talent come through this team, through this organization, and we don't have a ring, man. That you can you can have that conversation on another episode. Can I have that when John comes on? Yeah, <laughs> John actually was it. He was at two of them and played both of them. I just was a I was a spectator in the last one, so that'd be a better question for John. But well, no, no, you're I, right. I mean, think about it. I mean, think about the guys in the yeah. in the in the in the Hall of Fame. Um, you're right. I mean, we've been the, the city of Buffalo and the Buffalo Bills franchise has been blessed with tremendous, tremendous players. I mean, um, you know, it, it's when you're playing, what's funny is is when you're playing, and like a guy like myself, I'm playing, and you you know, I mean, hell, you're in the league and you're watching these guys and you're like in awe. You know, you're <laughs> watching them do stuff, you're like, this is like superhuman stuff, right? Um, but it's, it's really cool. I mean, it's, uh, there's a local radio guy here in town named Pat Jones. Pat Jones used to be, uh, the head coach of the Oklahoma state Cowboys football team for a long time. He's really tight. He got the job after Jimmy Johnson left and went to Miami. And then he followed Jimmy, helped him a little bit in Dallas, excuse me, but he was Jimmy Johnson's tight ends coach in Miami. And there was with the Raiders for a little bit. And he goes, recruiting's not hard, man. He goes, he goes, anybody could have walked driven their car up to the edge of the football field in Palestine, Texas, and opened the door and seen Adrian Peterson and said, yep, that, that guy's going to be really good. <laughs> he goes, it's not hard to see. And that's how it is. I mean, there's some guys you just look at him and go, yep, he's been blessed, and he's going to yeah. be amazing. And those guys are those types of players. Man, well, at least, at least now um, it's fun again. I can say that much. Like now it's fun being a Bills yeah. fan again. Um, and that's an argument. Let me ask you that. Cause you're being a former player, a, a lot of times, you know, fans have this perspective on things, but um, as a player, so would you rather it be fun or, or win the championships? You know what I mean? So what I mean by that is, would you rather have say for your career, if you get drafted and they're like, you can go to the bills and you can have, eight to 10 years of consistent success. You're going to make the playoffs every year, win a division, maybe 65% of the time, but you probably won't win a Super Bowl. Would you want that career? Or would you say, you know what? I take a two year career. If I win the Super Bowl in the year one or two. Um, I would much rather win a Super Bowl. Okay. Um, I really would. Um, the championships, what it's all about. Um, that's why you play. Um, yeah, I mean, long careers are great. I mean, uh, I'd like to think if we won a Super Bowl, I'd get to play more than two years. Uh, Touche. Touche. You, you know, did your job. But, <laughs> right, I did my job. But, you know, one thing that's funny about really good football teams, and and really it's really good teams in general, but some of the most stressful, miserable times I've had in sports were on teams or been associated with teams that were really, really good. Because every week the pressure mounts and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And for instance, I was a uh, you know just following my son's team and when they won a state championship in high school. Um, my senior season when we went ten and two at University of Tulsa and went to the Freedom Bowl, 
really, really good teams. It's just, it's just a constant amount of pressure. So when you look at the Bills and the fact that they were able to go to four straight Super Bowls, the amount of pressure that team had on them, and they did it. Um, to use a non-football term, a non-football example, if you look at the Oklahoma Sooners women's softball team, 53 games in a row, um, they lose one game this season. Just, you know, and you, the amount of pressure those, those women were under. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's some of the best teams. It's some of the worst. It's just, it's, it's tough because you had that shroud hanging over you all the time because you got the target on your back every waking minute of the day. Every article's written about you. How are they going to beat you? Who's coming to beat you? Can you sustain? Can you maintain? Um, you know, are you going to crumble? Are you going to choke? And so that's why some of these teams that have sustained success, uh, it's really impressive because it's not easy because of the amount of pressure you're under. And see, I feel like that's um, kind of what happened to our team last year. I mean, uh, obviously with a ton of other things that that they dealt with as a team and, and as a community. But I do. I feel like being the hunted, you know, coming out of right. that offseason, everybody was saying, oh, the Bills are the Super Bowl favorites. Josh Allen is, is the MVP favorite. And, uh, you know, it, it's just like we had all of these expectations. And I feel like it probably did weigh on them. And come the end of the year when – I could see why uh, Jordan Poyer, he says it all the time. Like, you know, he he just hates that they ran out of gas and he doesn't use it as an excuse. A lot of players that I talk to haven't used that as an excuse, but he's like, no, in in all honesty, like we just ran out of gas. Like it was just a lot. And and he meant that mentally as well as the physical part of being a football player. So that's exactly what I was going to say, man. You could see it. I mean, they just, they just were done. They had, they had no energy. They just ran out of gas. That's, I mean, I agree with Jordan. It's dead on. All right. Well, last topic before we get on out of here, man. Um, also, if, if you're not doing anything, you're, you're up hanging with us, stick around for the, for the chop up immediately following this. Um, Sterles for the girls is going to be joining me and Jeremiah Poyer, uh, Jordan Poyer's brother, um, is doing his own thing, making his own name and stuff. Because now he's with Buffalo Rumblings, and he's a consistent member of uh, the Chop Up crew. And hopefully I'll, I'll get him to, to brand his own show. But stick around for the Chop Up. Uh, and then tomorrow, Jerry is going to be going live with Sarah for uh, Line to Gain. And, and right before them, Joe is back, at least somewhat. We're going to be doing Hump Day Hotline again. So, but, so but moving on. Um, all of these lists have been coming out. Like, obviously, like they're doing the Madden ratings now, and a lot of our players were like top 10. Um, right. But it, also, like, scouts and coaches and stuff have been rating players. And it came out that, you know, Josh Allen was the third best quarterback. But it's not just that they said he's the third best quarterback, it's a certain way that they, they said it that I wanted to talk to you about. I wanted your <laughs> opinion on it. Okay. So, the way it was quoted is that Joe Burrow. So it wasn't even about Josh Allen, (laughs) right? But Joe Burrow is reportedly viewed as the second best quarterback in the NFL. And is not even close. According to an AFC coach, Burrow was recently ranked as the second best quarterback in the NFL by executive scouts, coaches, players done in a survey by ESPN. One scout said that Burrow's consistency is a lot like Tom Brady and Drew Brees. Another coach said Burrow is more skilled than people give him credit for. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I I have to I have to disclose everything since we were going to talk about this. I did a little quick dive into comparisons. Statistically speaking, they're almost dead even. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, passing yards, touchdowns, interceptions—they're almost dead even. The only thing that that they played each other once in a divisional playoff game. Obviously, know how that went. Burrow's 1-0 against Josh and the Bills. Um, Burrow did take him to a Super Bowl his, his rookie year. Um, then they went to a conference championship game and lost. Um, I think that the the problem sometimes with football is, and I had this conversation with some, some kids this past weekend, some guys get the benefit of the doubt more than others because of where they've come from or – genetics or things like that. And let me, let me kind of phrase where I was coming from. I was talking to these kids and talking about, you know, college coaches are going to notice you right away because of what your genetics. If I see a six, five creature walking around, it's 350 pounds. It can bend all of a sudden. I'm like, 
hey, this is a prospect, right? He might play left tackle for us. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, ultimately, play on the field, okay? Play on the field. What you what you do on the field, your dependability, you show up every week to work, and the amount of effort you put into this is what's ultimately going to create your opportunities in between the lines, right? I think Joe Burrow probably gets a little bit of benefit of the doubt. Uh, you know, he went to Ohio State first. Josh went to JUCO. He then transferred to LSU. Josh went to Wyoming. Burrow won a national championship. Josh, what, won the Holiday Bowl maybe? <laughs> um, you know, Burrow wins the Heisman. Josh got to go sit at the ESPN Awards and was mentioned for probably the Unitas and maybe the Maxwell Club Award, but didn't mm -hmm. win one. You know what I'm saying? So Josh goes, went in the draft. So if you look at it, it's not always fair. It's not always fair, but usually that type of guy gets the benefit of the doubt more than the other guy. It's called human nature. Um, to me anyway, I mean, I think it's, a, it's kind of a dead heat to me. Um, statistically, they're the same. I know that Burrow has had the success in the playoffs. They go to a Super Bowl. I really like Joe Burrow. Um, I think they're interchangeable. One thing I like about Burrow, uh, maybe a little bit more than Josh, and I can't, and it's even hard to say that because Josh does it in a different way. Joe is this very. Maybe I would, you know, what would have been cool, and I hate to bring this whole thing up, is if 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 Joe Burrow and Josh Allen switched places, how would Josh, how would Joe Burrow have handled the whole dig situation? How, would that have happened? How would that have happened? Because I do like the way I do like the way Burrow competes. I like the way he holds himself in press conferences and stuff. Josh does a fine job, and the way Josh competes is running fools over, jumping over guys. I mean, he's mm -hmm. a dog on the field. I mean, he really shows it in his play, but. You know, maybe maybe Joe's a little more polished. Maybe he's a little more – he was a little more whatever. Um, can't say that anymore about jo about Josh because he's rolling with a Hollywood girlfriend now, right? So that puts him in the <laughs> upper echelon of pro quarterback. So really, other than the playoff success, they're kind of the same guy, wouldn't you think? I yep. mean, I don't know why – I don't know why it's exponentially better. I mean, I think was this is out – this is, do I like, this is like, do I like, you know, do I like Red Delicious or do I like, you know, mm -hmm. Golden Delicious? They're, they're both apples, right? I maybe like this one a little more. I, I don't see this exponential thing to me. Well, that was the part for me when they're like, and it's not close. Like, you know, to, to you, because right. I can't, I can't argue with anybody. If you say that you're any, now, I think everybody can agree that Patrick Mahomes is, is the best in the league yes. right now. And yes. then I think after after him, I think any if you if you say Joe Burrow, OK, if you say Josh Allen, OK. And I'm not going to fight you either one that you pick there. Um, yeah, but this is also a, this is also a list to put Jalen Hurts seventh or eighth. And he just took a team on his back to the Super Bowl. Right. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. See, I, I don't, I don't put Jalen Hurts as high as everybody seems to right now. I think Jalen Hurts had the benefit of playing with like probably the best roster in football, and I'm not taking it away. Like he still was the quarterback, right. and he had, to, you know. But well, if you um, heard he, me talk about him, I didn't think he was going to make a roster, let alone go to the Super Bowl. Because I watched him at Oklahoma, I thought he was a very, very sporadic. I didn't think he was a passer at all. But now you know a little bit more about him. You kind of see how he's made, and you can understand why. But no, I wasn't arguing he should be higher. But I was saying it was interesting he wasn't. I got you. So you were you were more in the sarcastic end of the deal. I got you. Yes, because because that's how I see him. I think he's I think he's good. Um, if he's available when I'm drafting in fantasy, I'll take him because he's right. you know he's going to help me win. But but no, as far as um, I can name a couple that I put put before right. him. So well, obviously, but, what if you went to, if you remember the list? It was it was Mahomes. It was Burrow, it was Josh, and was four Herbert. That's Herbert. Mm -hmm. And then who was five? I don't even remember. I don't even remember five because I was more, I was more shocked at um, like how the top ten did round out. To me, there's certain guys that. To okay, I think Lamar should be higher than they place him, but I think because of yeah. the offense that he's in, he just never will get that. Well, maybe this year he'll get respect there. Right, but. 
I think he should be higher. So to me, here, I'll pull it up while you, while you kind of finish your thoughts on it. But no, I think that um, going back to it, I don't see the, the, I really, I do have an issue like you do with that term exponentially, or it's not even close. I mean, um, they're very, very similar, but no. Um, I mean, obviously quarterback is better if he's in a system that he's better in. Um, I don't know if I was, if I was Baltimore, I'd start running. I mean, I know Lamar takes off on his own. Yeah. R- Richard's right. Richard Rush brought up, but I, Aaron Rodgers was four. I think Abe, uh, Herbert was five. So that there's a whole nother episode of, of code of conduct. You can talk about your boy Aaron Rodgers being rated number four. Um, and I'm, and for the record too, I'm actually happy as well that Tua <laughs> did not, you know, yes. a lot of times people over rank Tua. I'm happy that that. Hey man, great. is that Photoshop dude? Are they photoshopping that dude? Are they just catching him at like a bad angle or what, man? I don't know, man. Seriously. But it's weird. So here's the list. I'll tell you the list. So it's it's Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, Rogers, Herbert, Jalen Hurts was six. Okay. Lamar Jackson was seven, and I personally I put Lamar Jackson over Jalen Hurts. Um, I put Aaron Rodgers under Herbert. They had Trevor Lawrence at eight, Dak Prescott at nine, and Matt Stafford at ten. I love the fact that Dak Prescott is nine. You know why? Because everybody think uh, uh, you got to understand. I live in Tulsa, so it's Cowboys country, right? You got mm-hmm. Cowboys fans, and then you got all these new blood Kansas City fans that are the most obnoxious thing you could ever imagine. You know, they we I've been a Kansas City fan since birth. You know all this, and really you haven't seen them except for the last couple of years. But everybody down here thinks Dak is trash, man. <laughs> like they're trying to run that dude out. Like they're like, we gotta get rid of Dak, man. I got a new quarterback. I'm like. These cats got him rated what six or seven, six. I love Dak. I love Dak. I think he's eight. I think Dak's a great. I think Dak is a great quarterback. I like Dak a lot, and I hope he has success. I do too. I think, and then we can get on out of here now. But I think I think Dak um, is a lot better than he gets credit for. But I think kind of what you were mentioning. I think when you play for the Cowboys, it's just one of those things where it's just a pressure that comes from being on. Right. You know, it's like in basketball. You play for the Lakers or the Knicks. The Knicks can be the worst team in the league this year, but it's the Knicks. So <laughs> right. they're going to, you know, you're going to pay right. attention to the Knicks right. every year. So I just think with the Cowboys, you know, he can throw an interception and to the world, it's it it's weighted like 10 interceptions right. versus like you mentioned with Burrow. He could throw an interception. It's like, oh, he'll bounce back. It's fine. Right. Right. So, but no, I, yeah. I love Dak. I love Dak. So, but let's get on out of here, man. You uh, got anything you want to shout out? I already, I know we talked about your show, but why don't you go ahead and plug it again for tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. So we got um, uh, nine Eastern, eight Central. Uh, Sarah Larson and I are going to be on line the game right here in the Buffalo Rummings Networks. We're going to talk about, we're going to get real in depth on this running back contract situation. Uh, and we're going to get into a couple other things. We're going to push our college football stuff back to the, uh, to next week. So we're looking forward to it. Um, cause this, I think it, I think it's an issue. I really do. I think it's a, it's a big problem. I'm going to be tuned in. Cause I, I like when, when y'all really get to talking about the cap and, um, contracts and CBAs and all that stuff It's good information. So, um, if, if you guys want to learn something on a different level tomorrow with, with Jerry, you know, with the big O, go ahead and be sure to tune in at 9 PM Eastern eight central for the line to gain show. Um, and as well, again, eight o'clock tomorrow is going to be hump day hotline with Joe Miller and myself, and then stick around in a couple minutes here. Uh, we're going to be bringing the, the chop up right back to you. And y'all know how I do it over here. It's Buffalo rumblings. We love y'all. Y'all love each other. Take care of each other and live in peace. And as always stay positive, test negative, go bills, go bills. Code of conduct.